हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम सतीश मनचंदा फ्रॉम डिप्सा दैट इज डेली इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल साइंसेज एंड रिसर्च न्यू डेली टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन द मॉड्यूल करेक्टराइजेशन एंड एप्लीकेशन ऑफ लाइपोसोम फ्रॉम द पेपर नोवल ड्रग डिलीवरी सिस्टम टू सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट सी वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न फ्रॉम दिस मॉड्यूल इन दिस मॉड्यूल विल स्टडी अबाउट द करेक्टराइजेशन ऑफ लाइपोसोम्स and different applications of liposomes so students let's start with the characterization of liposomes liposomes are characterized by the following ways that is number 1 determination of size next determination of lamellarity that is the number of bilayers next is zeta potential the fourth point is encapsulation efficiency after that in vitro drug release and last stability of the liposomes let's start first of all with the size determination size of the liposome is one of the most important parameter because size of the liposome dictates its fate in vivo and also their mode and extent of action it plays an important role when they are to be administered administered by inhalation or parenteral route the most commonly used techniques for determination of size are number 1 electronic micro electron microscopy next dynamic light scattering and final field flow fractionation so let's start with electron microscopy different variations of electron microscopy are transmission electron microscopy that is also abbreviated as tem tem next is freeze fracture tem and the cryo electron microscopy these techniques also reveal the morphological aspects of the liposomes next is atomic force microscopy it is used to study the size and morphology of the liposome AFM also provide information about the aggregation process that might take place in the liposomal preparation during their storage. Next is dynamic light scattering abbreviated as DLS. It is used for performing size distribution analysis of liposome. This technique is based on measuring the variations in the intensity of the light scattered and it needs very small sample volume and the range of measurement varies from few nanometer to micrometer determination of lamellarity in lamellarity determination the number of lamella or the lipid bilayer membranes present in the liposomes is determined lamellarity widely varies and depends on the type and nature of the constituting lipids and the method of preparation followed lamellarity is an important aspect to be analyzed as the number of lamella has a significant effect on the encapsulation efficiency and also on the kinetics of drug release number of lamella also influences the fate of liposomes in the body after administration lamellarity of liposomes is usually determined by measuring the change in visible or fluorescent signal when some lipid marker reagent is added the results are obtained when the total signal is compared with the signal achieved after the reaction between the lipid marker and the specified reagents zeta potential zeta potential is exactly defined as a measure of the magnitude of the electrostatic or charge repulsion or attraction between particles majority of the colloidal particles including liposomes carry an electric charge on their surfaces in suspension form this surface charge can be a result of either inherent nature of the constituting lipid or their interaction with the surrounding medium the groups present on the surface of the liposomes may get ionized dissociation of acidic groups impart a negative charge to the liposome whereas 
a basic group dissociates to give positive charge to the surface of liposomes. Charged species may also get adsorbed onto the surface of liposomes. Adsorption of cationic species result in positively charged liposome and anionic species lead to negatively charged surface. Jitter potential is one of the fundamental parameters which are known to affect stability. It gives an estimate about the extent of the interaction between liposomes. Values of zeta potential help to predict the stability of the liposomal suspension. High values indicate good stability of the liposome suspension since all the liposomes having high negative or positive charge will tend to repel each other and thus no aggregation will take place. Conversely, if there is no or low charge, then flocculation will take place. Zeta potential of liposomes is measured by using a laser which provides a light source illuminating the liposomes present within the sample cell. The incident laser beam then passes through the center of the sample cell and the scattered light is detected. When an electric field is applied, all the liposomes moving through the entire volume will cause fluctuation in the detected light. The frequency of the fluctuation will be proportional to the speed of liposomes. The information is passed to a digital signal processor and then to a computer which calculates the zeta potential. Encapsulation efficiency. The encapsulation efficiency of liposomes account for the amount of drug that is encapsulated in the liposomes. Determination of the encapsulation efficiency is important since it dictates the amount of the formulation that should be administered so as to deliver the therapeutic concentration of the drug. To determine the true amount of encapsulated drug, the unencapsulated drug must first be separated from the drug loaded formulation. This separation can be accomplished by any of the various methods available. One such method is mini column centrifugation, which is based on the difference between size of the unencapsulated drug and drug loaded liposomes. Another method which can be used is dialysis technique where a dialysis membrane having an appropriate cutoff is used. Ultra centrifugation can also be done for separating unbound drug from liposome. It is one of the simplest and fastest method that can be used for this purpose. The separated drug loaded Liposomes are then used to determine the amount of drug loaded. This is done by disrupting the lipidic bilayer using methanol or Triton X100. Disruption of liposome causes the complete release of the encapsulated material. Quantification of the encapsulated material can be done by any suitable technique including fluorescence spectroscopy, spectrophotometry, enzyme-based methods, and electrochemical techniques. High-performance liquid chromatography, that is HPLC, can also be used for determining the encapsulation efficiency. Since HPLC is also used to separate the unencapsulated drug from the drug-loaded drug -loaded liposomes. This method can also be used to track the stability of liposomes in terms of leakage during storage. In vitro drug release. In vitro drug release needs to be determined to estimate the amount of drug that will be released as a function of time inside the body. In vitro drug release studies are most commonly performed by using diffusion technique which involves the use of dialysis membrane. The dialysis tube needs to be chosen carefully. 
depending on its drug absorption tendency and various other factors. Drug should not be absorbed by the dialysis membrane and the membrane should be freely permeable to the active ingredient. That is, the cutoff molecular weight of the dialysis membrane should not hinder in the process of diffusion. The first step of the procedure of this technique involves putting a small amount few milliliter of the liposomal suspension in the dialysis bag which is hermetically tied. This dialysis bag which contains formulation is kept in the dissolution media. The system is to be maintained at 37 degrees Celsius and kept under stirring continuously. Small aliquots of dissolution media are taken at certain intervals of time and the amount of drug released is determined by UV spectroscopy or HPLC. Sink conditions are maintained throughout the study by replacing the amount of media withdrawn with the same amount of fresh media. Thus, the volume of the receptor, di receptor dissolution media remain constant. Stability of liposomes Stability also plays important role in determining the synthesis process, administration, storage condition and shelf life of liposomes. Stability issues that are faced by liposome is the fusion of smaller liposomes to form bigger liposomes as bigger liposomes are more stable thermodynamically. The another problem is the leakage of the encapsulated drug from the liposome. Applications of liposomes. Liposomes are proved to be very useful in clinical therapeutics, incorporating diverse fields like drug carrier for topical delivery, targeted drug delivery, intracellular drug delivery, and protecting drugs, proteins, and genes by encapsulating and thereby improving the safety, efficacy, bio and bioavailability of therapeutics. The application of liposomes can be broadly classified into two categories. One is therapeutic application, another one is diagnostic application. The therapeutic applications can be further uh, subcategorized into several categories like antimicrobial drug delivery, anti-cancer drug delivery, gene therapy, and some other applications may include like topical drug delivery. Applications of conventional liposomes. They are used for passive targeting, especially against solid tumor by EPR effect and for intracellular targeting macrophages. Such liposomes were studied for targeting neonatal jaundice by targeting liver and spleen. One of the example of this is amphotericin B. It is used to deliver the antifungal amphotericin B to enhance the drug accumulation in phagolysosomes within the same phagocyte that harbor the fungi. Applications of recent liposomes. Recently, different types of liposomes are studied. For example, stealth liposomes, pH sensitive liposomes, cationic liposomes, immune liposomes, stimuli responsive liposomes, and radioactive liposomes. As we have seen earlier in that the applications of liposomes can be categorized into two main categories that is therapeutic application and diagnostic application. Now therapeutic applications of stealth liposomes. They are used for their potential application in sustained drug release for targeting vaccination and gene therapy. Stealth liposomes are newly developed liposomes with prolonged circulation half-lives and dose-independent pharmacokinetics. Cell liposomes have been tested for their efficacy as a slow-release system for the rapidly degraded, schedule-dependent antineoplastic drug 1-O-D-arabinofurinocyl cytosine 
that is era c in the in the treatment of murine l1210 c2 leukemia increasing the therapeutic efficacy of the formulation and targeting is described under under several categories different categories include the stealth liposomes in targeting next is stealth liposomes in cancer therapy another category include stealth liposomes in antimicrobial therapy next is stealth liposome in gene therapy they are also used for topical drug delivery they are also used for ocular drug delivery and in cosmetic industry now stealth liposomes in targeting that is therapeutic applications of stealth liposomes controlling the permeability of liposome membrane and thus avoiding drug release will minimize the negative side effects caused by freely circulating drug molecules targeting can be both active and passive now first of all stealth liposomes in cancer therapy solid tumor can be targeted by different kinds of liposomes like antibody mediated liposomes folate mediated liposome targeting transferrin mediated liposome targeting etc there are the pathophysiological changes in the tumor cells like over expression of certain receptors like transferrin or her2 receptors thus using anti her2 liposomes or antibodies against transferrin ultimately leads to targeting in this way toxicity to the other normal cells is much minimized and therapeutic efficacy of the drug delivery system is increased as well as reduces the side effects associ associated with chemotherapy the research mentions that there is a better targeting by attaching the specific receptor molecules to the liposomes not only because of the specific molecule that targets the particular site the long circulating nature of the stealth liposomes enhances the half life of drug in the blood along with avoiding the clearance from blood along with the targeting molecules attached to the long circulating liposomes for better targeting ph sensitive liposomes are also studied for cancer drug delivery though the intracellular ph of the cells within healthy tissues and tumor is similar however the tumor exhibits lower extracellular ph than the normal tissue thus taking this point into consideration by using the ph sensitive lipids like alkylated copolymer of n isopropyl lacrylamide and methacrylic acid in combination with peg for long circulation are studied for better targeting now stealth liposome in antimicrobial therapy liposomes have been used to administer drugs in infective conditions like malaria and leishmaniasis liposomes liposome encapsulation of the aminoglycoside for, for example amikacin and gentamicin quinolones beta lactam and polypeptide has significantly enhanced the activity of these antibiotics in the treatment of intracellular mycobacterial infections they are also used for targeting intracellular pathogens by using lap, uh, using liposomes like for treatment of multi drug resistance tuberculosis therapeutic applications of stealth liposomes stealth liposomes in gene therapy liposomes are showing particular promise as intracellular delivery system for anti sense molecules ribosomes protein and peptide and dna 
especially the cationic lipid based liposomes are studied for the gene therapy examples of polycationic liposomes for gene delivery is liposomes prepared by cetylated polyethylene amine therapeutic application of stealth liposome in topical drug delivery these liposomal formulations provide sustained enhanced level in deeper strata of the skin they have the capacity to deliver a sufficient quantity of drug into deeper tissue to treat the skin symptomology topical application of a liposomal preparation of hydrocortisone resulted in higher concentrations of drug in the individual layers of human skin as compared to a similar application of hydrocortisone formulated as an simple ointment liposomal dermal products to be available in market such as hepaplus liposome gel from hexel pharma heparin per spray from ratio farm diclofenac dolot from gini farm and elamax from fundel labs are the products which are multi lamellar vesicular liposomal formulations therapeutic applications of stealth liposomes in pulmonary drug delivery liposomes as carrier system for pulmonary delivery offer several advantages over aerosol delivery for of the corresponding non encapsulated drug liposomes might be used to solubilize poorly soluble drugs to provide a pulmonary sustained release reservoir prolonging local and systemic therapeutic drug levels they facilitate intracellular delivery of drugs especially to alveolar macrophages tumor cells or epithelial cells they prevent local irritation of lung tissues and reduce the drugs toxicity target specific cell population using surface bound ligands or antibodies and be absorbed across the epithelium to reach the systemic circulation intact the reduced blood glucose levels were observed to be significantly lower when comparing liposome encapsulated insulin to insulin and liposome administered separately liposomal formulations in ocular drug delivery these liposomes get accumulated in cornea and their drainage from the cornea was slower than the free drug thus the liposomes provide corneal drug loading that reach the maximum in hours ciprofloxacin a fluoroquinolone antibiotic is widely used in the treatment of ophthalmic infections however the efficiency is often limited due to poor ocular bioavailability of aqua solution this drug has been successfully encapsulated in liposomes liposomes in cosmetic industry the use of liposomes in skin gels or skin creams has been generated in the field of cosmetics vegetable phospholipids are widely used for topical applications in cosmetics and dermatology high content of esterified essential fatty acid especially linoleic acid which is believed to increase the barrier function of the skin and decrease water loss within a short period of time after application for example lipogest which is a trademark a natural balancing cream is manufactured using liposome by a patented technology diagnostic purpose of liposome large liposomes are clearly cleared rapidly via uptake by resident phagocytic cells of reticulo endothelial system we can passively target large liposomes to the phagocytic cells of the rs system for delivering diagnostic imaging agents to the liver and spleen aqueous contrast enhancing agents entrapped in liposomal carriers can be targeted to these organs and distinctions can be made between normal and tumorous tissues using computed tomography apart from aqueous contrast field liposomes liposomes which encapsulate gas are 
also of importance for diagnostic purposes. Available marketed formulations of liposomes. There are several examples of drugs which are available in the market as liposomal formulation. For example, amphotericin B. It is available by the name of Abilset by the company Enzone, which is a liposome company. Another brand name is Ambisome by the Gilead Sciences, a next pharmaceutical firm. Another name is Amphotech by Sequest Pharmaceuticals. The another example include the example of anamycin which is available by the brand name of anamycin by Aronex Pharmaceuticals. Cisplatin analog is also available by the name of Aeroplatin by, uh, by the company Antigenics Incorporation. Tretinoin is also available by the name Atragen by Aronex Pharmaceuticals. Also the Donorubicin is available by the Donoxome by Gilead Sciences next to pharmaceutical company. Available marketed formulation of liposome. The other examples of different drugs include the brand name of Deposite having Citrabine by the Pesira manufacturer. Other example include the uh, brand of Morphine by the name Depoder by Sky Pharma Endo. Doxorubicin is also encapsulated in uh, liposomes which is available as a brand name of Doxy and Celex by Orthobiotech scaring plug and sequest pharmaceuticals the paclitaxel is available by the brand name lap etu that is lep dash etu by neofarm cisplatin is available by the brand name lipoplatin by regulon doxorubicin is available also by the name myoset by genus pharmaceuticals irino t scan by the name of nectar 102 by nectar pharmaceutics and Nistatin is available by the brand name of Niotran by Aeronex Pharmaceuticals. So students, let's now summarize what we have learned in this module. First of all, we can say liposomes have pH gradient or electrostatic gradient and are suitable for hydrophilic drugs. Characterization of liposome is an important parameter for their application as only after characterization we can optimize the formulation for better drug loading and targeting. In liposomes, passive loading of drug provide better application. Thank you.